Who is the best current player in the NFL? We've narrowed the field to 16 players who will compete in the best NFL player tournament, facing off in head-to-head -head contests. You, the viewer, will decide, and we'll go over all the details coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lay. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Thank you so much everyone for joining us. We're excited to talk a little bit about this best player in the NFL competition. Uh, so what's it all about? What are the qualifications? So we're making this a little bit easy and narrowing it down to just offensive players. So uh, position player, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. Uh, it has to be someone who played at least one down during this current season. Uh, and then finally, probably the, the, the most important thing to emphasize here is that we're going to ask you to consider these players as if they were during their prime. I want to acknowledge a draft dashboard who helped us put on this tournament. We did a ton of research to determine the top 16. The draft dashboard site condenses the data in an easy to understand way. They can help you uh, be better prepared for both your season long leagues and DFS play. In addition to the NFL, they cover other sports, including the NBA. So if you want to check it out, they have a $1 trial offer for one month membership. It's a good time to do it with the NFL playoffs and the NBA starting. We're actually an affiliate, so it actually helps our channel as well. Use the link on the screen or it's also on the description. So back to this actual tournament, Michael. We, along with the, my co-founder, Gary Kurtzman, narrowed the field to the top 16. And boy, Michael, it was tough to narrow it in the top 16. So they're going to compete in a head-to-head -head matchup, single elimination tournament. How is it going to be determined? By you guys, by voting. Simply go to fantasyfootballconsultants.net. You can't miss it. There'll be a big block with a blog that talks about the best player in the NFL. Click on that and you can get right into the voting. It takes less than two minutes to vote. It's super easy. You're just picking who is the better player in each of the head-to-head -head matchups. The first round goes until now through Sunday, January 10th at 12 Pacific Standard Time at noon. And then we're gonna tabulate the results Michael and I will have a follow-up show giving you the results and then breaking down the quarterfinals in each of the head-to-head -head matchups. And then the voting will open again on January 12th and it closes on January 17th. And it continues that way with the semis. And then final, the, finally, the finals, Michael, on Super Bowl week. When we came up with our 16, we had to leave somebody out. And these 10 are probably the people people are gonna go, how did this guy not make it? When you look at these 10 players, is there anyone that jumps out at you like, man, shouldn't he have been in the top 16? A few of them, right? I, I, you look at Larry Fitzgerald, what he's done over his entire career. But yeah, we're talking about guys in their prime. So, you know, really that instant. For me, it's Tyreek Hill and maybe even Derrick Henry. But Tyreek, man, that guy demands attention like perhaps no one else. So who did make our top 16? We can finally, Michael, reveal it to our viewers. Devontae Adams, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Antonio Brown, Zeke Elliott, Rob Gronkowski, DeAndre Hopkins, and Lamar Jackson. And rounding out our 16 are Julio Jones, Travis Kelsey, Pat Mahomes, Christian McCaffrey, Adrian Peterson, Aaron Rodgers, Michael Thomas, and of course, Eric's Russell Wilson. I'm going to be unbiased. Yeah, right. All right. So let's go to the first matchup, Michael. Yeah, man, we're doing this alphabetically and we get two of the studs right out of the gate. I guess you might call this kind of new school versus old, old school with Devontae Adams, who's a three-time pro bowler, had a phenomenal year in 2018, and he's following that up here in 2020 against Tom Brady, who all he does is win, who with his six Super Bowl rings, he's a three-time NFL MVP. And even because of that injury he had a few years back, the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. So let's start with Devontae Adams and let's talk about his credentials. 
Michael, this guy is not a star. He's a superstar. He was drafted in 2014 in the second round, and it took him a little while to get basically Aaron Rodgers' respect. But he was so good in 2016 and 2017, they asked franchise wide receiver Jordy Nelson to hit the road. And then Devontae Adams really took off. In 2018, he averaged 92 yards a game, 83 yards in 2019. And Michael, the best is this year, as we're filming, 104 yards a game. What's most impressive to me about Devontae Adams is what a great route runner he is and how he always seems to get separation. I mean, he there's no route that he can't run. He does screens. He can go deep. Truly an impressive wide receiver. Yeah, I've been watching this guy since he was at Fresno State. And he's, you know, he's from the Bay Area, which is where I, I was at. He is impressive. Anyone who can command the attention that he commands, and that's partly because of who he has opposite him, but the focus that, that he has had, and he still produces the numbers that he does, like you say, it's about route running, it's about physical prowess and dominance, uh, and obviously the speed that he has. And he's a great pass catcher. He's had moments of the drops, but very rare. What an athlete. Yeah, so we, on the other side, We've got Tom Brady. And you know, the crazy thing about Tom Brady, and we're gonna talk about other quarterbacks uh, later, I can't talk about the fact that he has this unbelievable rocket arm. I can't talk about that he has these incredible feet where he can run for tons and tons of yards. But what he does know how to do is he knows how to be a leader and he knows how to win. You know, they asked Bill Belichick, what makes him so great? He said their work ethic and his ability to think strategic. Michael, one of the things that you said on the show that I thought was so insightful is how important that a quarterback is to uh, be able to read the defense before the play starts. And it seems like Tom Brady does that so well. What do you think? Yeah, I, you, you kind of hit it on the head with the, the many things that you mentioned. He, anyone who can win, with, like you say, I mean, when they showed him at the combine, he went 199th that year for a reason, right? In a, in a draft year of quarterbacks, he was low on the totem pole because he just wasn't that athletic. What he has is what is required for a good quarterback and perhaps better than anyone. Yeah, he's had some good people around him, but he's also had years where he didn't. His ability to perform is because of what you say, the strategic mindedness. And isn't the NFL all about winning? No yeah. one's done that more than Tom Brady. Yeah, not only in the regular season, but he holds uh, NFL records for the most uh, postseason wins. And he's got six Super Bowl rings. It's truly impressive. So let's talk about these guys together, Michael. Yeah, this isn't the best athlete competition. This is the best player in the NFL. Who do you want leading your team or on your team to make sure that your team can win? And it's a team sport, not just an individual sport. Is De Devontae Adams, uh, not only is he in the top 20, he is potentially in the top five or six. But yeah, you're right. You, you got pitted against one of the... The, the top guys right away. Now, the thing about Tom Brady is what makes him so special is his full entire body of work. And we're talking about in an individual year. And I'll, I'll be honest, as I, every single year, as I have watched the NFL and as I've thought through who the best player was each year, I, I never really had Tom Brady top of mind. Throughout the whole season, I never was like, well, Tom Brady's gonna be MVP. He's the reason why. But when you see what he's done year in and year out, then you have to look back and reflect on what he really did bring to the table in some of those seasons where they didn't really have the best whatever it was or best athletes surrounding him. And I got to believe he's going to come out on top here. That's who I would go with. Yeah. You know what would be real sad is if Tom Brady wins like 90% to 10% because he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> like my, my vote will be with Tom Brady. But I actually think this is close. And it's not a slam against Tom Brady. It's how good I truly think Devontae Adams is. I think as we filmed today, I think Devontae Adams is the best wide receiver in the game. 
In our next matchup, it's two perennial superstars at their position. Drew Brees at quarterback and wide receiver Antonio Brown. Drew Brees is a Super Bowl champion. He has twice been named NFL Offensive Player of the Year, and he's been named to an astounding 12 Pro Bowls. Antonio Brown is marked by his consistency. He's the only receiver in NFL history to get at least five receptions and 50 yards in each game uh, during the season. Through 2013 and 2018, he has had at least 100 receptions and at least 1,280 yards, six straight seasons. Michael, how do you break this down? Let's first talk about Drew Brees. Well, this feels a lot like the last round we talking about, uh, where we have one of the top quarterbacks ever and one of the top receivers ever. Uh, and and kind of in similar, Antonio Brown's obviously a little further removed than Devante, Devante Adams is, but kind of similar situations. I mean, Drew Brees has been with Tom Brady all along. In fact, they're neck and neck on uh, passing yards, on total touchdowns. Uh, basically, Drew Brees is in the conversation with Tom Brady head to head, except for one thing, the Super Bowl championships, the winning, right? And actually, he's been a really winning quarterback as, as well. And all of the stats point to the best quarterback ever as Drew Brees. He leads coming into the season in completions, in completion percentage and total passing yards and total passing TDs. Now, only Tom Brady passed him in only one of those categories, which is passing TDs because Drew Brees has been hurt this year. So um, man, it just watching this guy, he puts cartoon like our video game like numbers up and what i love about him michael is he doesn't just rely on one wide receiver he can he can throw it to anyone and as a quarterback he seems to do a really good job going through the different progressions of okay this guy's not available this guy's not open i'll go to this guy or i go to that guy if you're thinking about starting your team with a quarterback man it's hard not to start with drew Brees. yeah no i i I agree. You talk about a leader, like we were talking about Tom Brady. Drew Brees is also a fantastic leader and also just a fantastic person. Somebody just to really like, which kind of leaves, takes me to Antonio Brown, who's had a lot of challenges off the field, a lot of reasons to not like this guy right now. Uh, and obviously he's, you know, a little bit down in terms of where he has been historically. The thing about it is, I don't know that anybody has impacted the game individually, say maybe Tyreek now, he's starting to get there like Antonio Brown did when he was in his prime. Nobody was so dangerous at the line of scrimmage and could go deep on you like Antonio Brown. Nobody drew double teams and beat double teams as consistently as Antonio Brown did. They'd even hand them the ball. Here's a telling statistic. Bill Belichick has been able to basically isolate the best offensive weapon on every single team, except for Antonio Brown on the Steelers. If you look at the performances that he had against the Patriots versus other top talent that Bill Belichick tried to isolate, that's the really the one athlete that Belichick couldn't bottle up. He had the best hands at the time. He ran the best routes and he was perhaps the fastest guy at the time. Combine all those things, it made him the most dangerous weapon, which I think makes him perhaps one of the best NFL players during his prime. For me, that's who wins this competition. Antonio Brown is just incredible to me. He's a four-time All-Pro. He's made the Pro Bowl seven times, truly deserving. As Michael said, he has been the clear number one receiver that gets the shutdown corner every single game, and he gets double teamed. And to take that and to be consistent every game is incredible. That stat about uh, getting at least five receptions and 50 yards in every, all 16 of the games in a season is just incredible. And his season total for six straight years, that's, that's going to be the tipping factor for me, Michael. I don't think, if you're asking me to predict, I think Drew Brees is going to win this matchup, but I don't think he should. I think Antonio Brown should. And I think Antonio Brown has a really realistic 
chance if I was making the call to win this entire contest. Because I think you can make a very good argument. He's the best wide receiver of the ones that have played this year. Considering in his prime, he's the best wide receiver ever of all the players. The only reason I would say to pick Breeze over Brown here and, and not have Brown, like you say, do so well in this is the NFL is a football game and it's a team sport. And there has been discussion about how even when Antonio Brown was in his prime, he wasn't the best teammate. I, I don't know that we know the full facts on that or if that should enter into play here, but I'm sure it'll enter into our viewers' minds. And, and I don't think that we should, you know, tell them not to. All right, so our next, our next pairing is Zeke against Gronk. Zeke, a three-time pro bowler in his first three years, because he just came out of the gates hitting it hard, and a two-time NFL rushing champion all, all, already against our social media star, uh, Gronk, Rob Gronkowski, Gronkowski, who's a three-time Super Bowl champion with those Patriots. Uh, he's been first-team All-Pro four years as we've seen him just dominate. Uh, and after he, and he's done that with a lot of injuries. In fact, he's been AP Comeback Player of the Year. Eric, how would you break these down, starting with Zeke? Yeah, everybody knows this, Michael. Feed the man, feed Zeke, because if you feed him, he is going to be sensational. On a per-game basis, he's only been in the league four seasons. He's averaged on the ground 85 yards, 96 yards, 98 yards, and 108 yards. That, to me, is absolutely insane and in why he should get a first ticket invite to this tournament. Very well deserving. Unfortunately, he's been going down each year, and he's having a very tough 2020 year. But we're asking about his prime. Unfortunately, Michael, you would have thought he would have been in his prime now. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a bit of a down year, not only because of what's happened to his quarterback and also his defense, but also because of uh, he's had some ding, this dings this year, right? And that happens. That's what happens with being a running back. Unfortunately, he's the first running back that we're going to talk about right now. And so he didn't, we don't have the ability to talk about how similar situations that happened to other running backs. You know, Zeke, kind of similar to what we've said around uh, Antonio Brown and Devontae Adams, you know, he's the, the focus of attention. Uh, before really last year, we didn't even know that Dak was going to be great throwing, winging the ball. And so it was all about defending Zeke. Uh, and like you say, he's not just great with the ball in his hands behind the line of scrimmage, but he is when he has the ball uh, out in the open. He, he really does draw that attention that makes it to where he deserves to be on this list. On the other side, Michael, we've got Rob Gronkowski, and he holds the record of all tight ends for doing probably the thing that you want tight ends to do the most, which is get into the end zone and score. 0.7 a game, which is absolutely sensational. Jimmy Garoppolo, his teammate at one time, said he's basically an offensive tackle <laughs> with speed. And, and you have a situation, Michael, where you have a guy who's so large, who's so big and fast, he's a, he becomes just an unbelievable weapon uh, in your offense. And I know it's not something that the fans were ever going to point on, but he happens to be one of the best blocking tight ends, which is all a part of his uh, repertoire. What's your take on Gronk? No, I think that I'm glad you hit on that point because I think that's what really, uh, that's one of the many things that sets him apart. I think it's going to be a challenge for some of our viewers who've been around the block for a while saying, gosh, you know, I don't even think Rob Gronkowski is one of the best tight ends, or I don't think Zeke's one of the best running backs. They don't even deserve in, to be in the all-time conversation. Well, we're not talking all-time, right? You're right. There are some, you know, folks that obviously played those positions much longer um, and, and had a longer duration of impact. But, and we're, while we're not just talking fantasy points here, you know, how many years in a row did Rob Gronkowski go number one among tight ends and even in the first round at times of, of a draft because of what he can do because of his speed because of his hands and because of his intelligence as a pass catcher right you know maybe he's not the brightest guy off the field but on the field he understands the game and how many of our top tight end catchers were not great blockers right like you say weren't great at the the point of attack like Gronkowski is 
So there's no question in my mind that he deserves to be in the conversation, even though he wasn't even in the league last year. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing that he's even being somewhat productive uh, this year. And, and Michael, I want to, I feel like the public gives so much credit to Tom Brady for getting six Super Bowls. Well, if, if you do that, you have to give Rob Kronkowski credit for three of them. And he's a winner as well. So uh, it, this is not an easy call, but I'm going to discount Elliot for what he's done this year when he should still be in his prime. Maybe that's not fair. And I think Gronkowski is extremely worthy. I am going to give the nod to the Gronk. Yeah, he's not my favorite guy for some reason and for, for other reasons off the field, but he's kind of fun to watch there as well. Uh, I, I actually don't think it's that close because of what you just said. I think Zeke still, maybe he's not in his prime yet, and so we don't know, and we'll see him turn the corner. I actually think that's a possibility, but it's hard to judge someone before they're in the prime, so I'm going with Gronk. This next matchup, Michael, features probably the two biggest athletes in the entire competition. We have DeAndre Hopkins going up against Lamar Jackson. Hopkins is the, in the NFL TD leader in 2017. Three times he's been a first team all pro. Twice he's had receiving yards over 1520. And he's an Iron Man, Michael, missing only two games in eight seasons. Lamar Jackson is something special. I don't know if we've ever seen anyone like him at quarterback where he's the first NFL player in history to throw for 3,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards in the same season. And he is currently the reigning NFL MVP. Michael, how do you break it down? Let's start with DeAndre Hopkins. Man, I'm glad you put that he only missed two games in the last eight seasons. One of the knocks on Hopkins is that he's kind of skinny, right? And he doesn't have the bulk that Devontae Adams has and some of these other uh, receivers. And actually, Devontae Adams has been injured more often than DeAndre Hopkins, even though similar to Devontae Adams uh, and even on Antonio Brown, he's been the focus of attention on that Texans team. Now he's on the Cardinals uh, when that's really kind of all they had right was this this ability to get the ball into the hands of Hopkins I'll tell you what all I want to all I need to say is one thing did you see that catch against the Buffalo Bills this year on what we knew was going to one player right in in, in between four defenders and he went up and got the ball because of his athletic ability again as we talk about these these players the ones that demand the attention and still produce they show that they're the best players in the league. Yeah, and he shows he can do it in two different places. And I, I was skeptical knowing he was playing with uh, Deshaun Watson and he had all those great years in Houston. Could he go to Arizona and replicate that? And the answer is yes, <laughs> he most certainly can. He has that great jumping ability that you said, as well as that blazing speed and great hands. Fantastic. I love the fact that he is an Iron Man. In 2018, Michael, he played, and this is not a misprint, 100% of the snaps. That's absurd. 100% of the snaps. He got 115 targets, Michael. Guess how many of those did he quote unquote drop? Zero. Unbelievable. This wow. guy is incredible. And well, when and that, you, that, sorry to interrupt, but that yeah. means that he's a great blocker as well. I mean, as a, as a receivers coach myself, what I look for, especially in high schoolers, which is where I coach, I look for people who can block. Those are the people who stay on the field. Someone who didn't miss a snap is a great blocker. Yeah, and Michael, I think a lot of times, if you were just not to get into the stats and, and, and start looking at film and things and think about, well, who should win this tournament? My guess is DeAndre Hopkins is not going to be one of the first people people would have thought about. Well, I got news for you. He's just an absolutely a deserving winner if he turns out to win this, uh, win this contest. The other thing that I really like about him, Michael, is there's no route that he can't run. He can run the really deep passes. He can do the screens. He can do the short pattern. He can be relied on with his hand to get that key first down or to hit that deep bomb. 
truly an amazing talent. So should we talk about Lamar Jackson? Yes. What do you think about Lamar? Well, he was one that, as you know, we debated a little bit whether he even makes it into the top 20 because of some of the other uh, alternatives, not necessarily a knock on him. Uh, and I think it's because he's still kind of coming into his prime. It's hard with, again, these athletes that aren't quite in their prime yet. He still has a lot. I mean, he's, what, 23 years old? He's just a kid. Uh, and he moves like no one I've ever seen in the game, right? I remember when Michael Vick uh, and even to some extent, Steve Young, you know, were in the league and they, they basically made all these defensive players look like fools. No one, they weren't even touching what Lamar Jackson is able to do. And comparing him to Vick is not really fair because of his passing ability, his ability to deliver the ball on target and even make some good decisions. At first, I think that was the big concern. And we're seeing a little bit of a change this year on how teams are, uh, focusing on them. But it, I think it actually, if you really watch the game plan as it unfolds for the Baltimore Ravens, it's more about protecting Lamar Jackson than it is about d teams, you know, changing how they've approached him. And, and that's what's made him a little less productive this year. He is a real talent. Yeah. And I think they want to preserve him a little bit, right? They want his health. But guess what? As we go down to the stretch and games that they have to win and come playoffs, I think they're going to unleash... Lamar Jackson show what an unbelievable talent he is. They asked all the NFL players, who's the best player in the NFL coming into this season? They asked them. And apparently the vote wasn't that close. It was Lamar Jackson. So Michael, if the players are saying that, you have to at least give that credence. And it was hard to imagine having a top 16 uh, tournament without him. I think that's right. And what, so what makes NFL players great is their ability to win. Lamar Jackson didn't win last year in the playoffs, despite a fantastic season. And that's a knock against him. We'll see. It's a little early to be having this competition for this part, but we'll be a little further into it by the time we get to some of these playoffs. If he becomes a difference maker and can, uh, and can be the reason why they win, like you say, because he's unleashed, then it really changes the rhetoric. And it may be too bad because he might be already out by then. Uh, and actually, for me, uh, it's just the stats that you gave me on Hopkins that I didn't know off the top of my head. I almost think that anyone who can play every down and not drop a pass with the number of passes he's had thrown to him, I, I actually think that's impossible. Like, I think yeah. that somebody messed up the stats. Yeah. I think there's no questions. Hopkins has to win. Yeah. Well, be, before we get to give my final opinion, I, I want to say this in defense an argument for Lamar Jackson. Everyone is, when we've already talked about uh, Tom Brady at quarterback and Drew Brees. But if you look at forward, Tom Brady had Rob Gronkowski. Drew Brees now has Michael Thomas. And we're gonna talk about Pat Mahomes. And he's had Kelsey and he's had Hill. Who has Lamar Jackson had? No one who's on this, in this tournament, that's for sure. So the fact that he's able to do things almost will his team to win on his own truly is impressive. All right. That said, I'm going to agree with you, Michael. And I'm really worried about DeAndre Hopkins here. <laughs> I'm worried that the FFC fans may vote in Lamar Jackson because of how flashy and amazing he is. But I have seen too much and how good DeAndre Hopkins has been in completely different systems, completely different quarterbacks, and completely different coaches. And one thing stays the same. He's incredible. So I'm going to vote for DeAndre Hopkins to move on to the next round. Man, just looking at this next two, just makes, and talking, just finishing the conversation on these other guys, just makes me really realize how many special stars there really are in the NFL, how, how fun it is for us to be able to watch this week in and week out. So the next two are Julio Jones against Travis Kelsey. Julio Jones, who has been the NFL receiving yards leader twice. He's been an, an, an eight time pro bowler. He's been around that long now, Eric, and, and really not surprising because he's always in the conversation. In 2015, 136 receptions and 1870, 1,871 yards. Now let's compare that to Travis Kelsey, who for an NFL record five seasons has had a thousand uh, plus yards as a tight end. Uh, first team all pro twice and five time pro bowler, which isn't surprising. 
And guess what? In 2020, he's leading all pass catchers, not just tight ends, in yards. Yeah, uh, Michael, this is a very interesting matchup. Let me start talking about Julio Jones. So in my research of Julio Jones and watching film on him, it's all about his body control. I mean, he's a beast. He's six foot three, 220 pounds, but he's got great hands. When I say body control, he knows how to get the two feet down. He knows how to, uh, he's been relied on time and time again in that offense and the number of receptions that, that he gets. I just would, would comment about the fact that he can outleap defenders. He can do these acrobatic catches. Truly a great, great wide receiver. Yeah, if you started watching him when he was at Alabama, you knew that he was going to do something once he got in the NFL. It's one of those rare, you know, circumstances where the guy in, you know, college, you knew he not only was going to be a, a, a good player in the pros, but that he was going to be a star because he was so big and had, you know, so many different tools. Uh, and it's a little surprising to me. He's been around this long. He has had some injuries, but man, he, you know, he's so intimidating, you know, week in and week out. Like when we're talking in Survivor, you know, if he's not playing, it really affects the, how the game's going to go. Yeah. On the other side, Travis Kelsey, man, his size, his hands, his speed, his agility. It is not fair. It is not fair to have all those skill sets. Uh, he's just incredible. He's a beast. He's by far the best tight end in the game on the currently, and it isn't even close. Yes, I know George Kittle is, is really good. But uh, to me, it's, it's Travis Kelsey when you're looking for who's the best pass catching tight end. Yeah, he may not be the blocker that we got from Rob Gronkowski, although he's still pretty good on that front. But he is, you know, he's leading the entire league. He's got Tyreek on his team, and he's still leading the entire league in receiving yards. And maybe that's partly because of Tyreek, because Tyreek's taking a little bit of attention away. But remember what I said about Belichick, you know, taking away players. Kelsey's been another one he's been challenged to take away again, partly because of some of the other athletes that are, that are, that are on that team. But, you know, talk about people while they're in their prime of all the people we've talked about, Travis Kelsey's the most in his prime and it's showing. And I have a hard time ever picking against him. Yeah. So I, I here's a stat for you, Michael, that I think is so important. Travis Kelsey has played seven seasons. He's missed one game. The Iron Man, that is so important and so valuable. And I'm going to make that tip the scales for me. I am going to vote personally. He has my endorsement. Travis Kelsey uh, should move on to the next round. I'm glad you brought that up, Eric. To me, these, the, these Iron Man statistics are so important, right? As a, as a coach for a team, somebody who's trying to pick the best NFL player, I want somebody who's durable, somebody who's going to be there each week. Because what's good about being such a talent if you're not available? So for me, not just because of that, but also because of how dangerous he is a weapon at the tight end spot, which is a super key position. In a lot of ways, more important than wide receiver position. I'm also tipping the scale to Travis Kelsey. All right, the next matchup is, prop, is another huge marquee matchup. It's basically the current and future face of the NFL as Pat Mahomes faces off against Christian McCaffrey. He's the re Mahomes is the reigning uh, Super Bowl MVP. In 2018, he had an absurd 50 touchdowns. That's the second most in NFL history. Well, Christian McCaffrey, third player in NFL history to both run and receive for more than 1,000 yards. And in fact, in that same year, he had a ridiculous 116 receptions. Michael, let's talk to us about Pat Mahomes. I think what makes him so impressive is, you know, where, where he was when he was playing at Texas Tech uh, as a uh, second round draft choice, I think is where he came in the draft versus where he is today. Similar to what we were talking about, Tom Brady is just shocking. And he has the sneaky athletic ability to go with it. If you watch his ability to deliver the football from any angle, uh, regardless of who's in his face and how they're in his face, 
going left or right. Uh, it really shows that he is a gunslinger like kind of none other. Uh, I, I don't know how anyone, like nobody wants to go up against Pat Mahomes in this competition because of what he's accomplishing. Is that because of Travis Kelsey and Tyreek? Of course that helps, but you know, there's been weeks where he hasn't had Tyreek and there's been weeks where the running back, their running game was not really in existence and he still produced. So man, I, I, it is going to be hard for anybody to beat Pat Holmes and Mahomes in my book. It, he's a gunslinger, but he's a gunslinger who's accurate. That's what's amazing. I mean, he, he's always had one of the highest passing completion percentages and he's always thrown for a very low of percentage of interceptions. And Michael, name something that Pat Mahomes doesn't do well. What's his weakness? What's his weakness? He can throw the ball deep. He can throw the ball accurately. He, he's very mobile, you know, not mobile in like Lamar Jackson, but he can buy himself time and he can run for that key first, first down. He, he is truly amazing. And, and, and you see that every time you, you watch him play. Yeah, and, I, and as I've talked a bit about with the quarterback, it's so important for their ability to make good pre-snap decisions and make great decisions when the pressure comes, uh, you know, real time in their face. So you want to see a statistic, look at Pat Mahomes' numbers. His QBR rating against the Blitz is by far the highest in the league, I think, ever. And, and I, to me, that's really telling about his preparation and his real time uh, capability. Yeah, now that making. He makes great decisions in the, the, the heat of the moment, in the, in the pressure situations. All yeah, right. He goes up against Christian McCaffrey, Michael. What do you think of McCaffrey? Yeah, what can't, what can't you say about this guy, right? Remember when he was at Stanford and basically everything went to him? He was a kick returner. He was a punt returner. He was the running back. He would get most of the receptions for the team. Uh, and then he just he's come to the NFL and repeat that. There's a reason he goes number one in the draft every year. Without question, any any time in the, NFL, the fantasy in the fantasy draft, anybody who doesn't pick McCaffrey in a fantasy draft, like people like look at this person like they're throwing the draft for the second person that gets to pick next. Like, there's no reason to ever go with someone other than McCaffrey because of his ability to command the game, including for a team that hasn't been that dominant. So he's he's in my book top athlete for sure. Whether he wins this co competition, uh, it's just really tough to be pitted against Pat Mahomes. He got screwed <laughs> his first round matchup. But they asked a really legendary running back, uh, Marshall Falk, what he thinks of Christian McCaffrey. And he said, he's just a better version of me. I mean, that, uh, high praise. I mean, when what I, Michael, what I think is great about Christian McCaffrey, it's not just that, okay, yeah, he can catch dump off passes. But what does he do after the catch? He always has a great yak. In other words, yards after the catch. He's great at breaking tackles. He has a real nose for the end zone. He, uh, he, he mixes elusiveness with toughness. I, I think he's going to be a really great uh, NFL player for years to come. And I want, want to, people to remember this. I know that he's been hurt in 2020, but before this year, three seasons, he didn't miss a game. So ordinarily, we think of him as an Iron Man. I think he should get credit for that. Michael, you almost feel like you've given it away, but where are you going, Mahomes or McCaffrey? I got to go with my man, Mahomes. I just love how coachable he is, how strategic he is. Got to go with Mahomes. I have to go with Pat Mahomes here. So next, next on the slate is Adrian Peterson, old man Adrian Peterson versus old man Aaron Rodgers. Two, two third, late 30-somethings here on the list. Adrian Peterson, some people might be wondering what, why he deserves to be here. Well, not only has he been the NFL MVP, he's been first-team All-Pro four times. And he's a five-time, uh, he's, sorry, fifth on the all-time career rushing list. Now, against uh, he's pitted against Aaron Rodgers, who has been MVP twice, So, but similar time frame in 2011, 2014. He's been a first-team All-Pro twice, and he's also got that Super Bowl win and MVP on his list. Eric, what do you think? 
let me educate you younger viewers who may not have been around when Adrian Peterson was in his prime. He was unbelievable. In 2012, he was just eight yards short of the all-time record uh, in uh, rushing yards. For single he season. had nearly 2,100 rushing yards. That's an average of 121 rushing yards a game. 121 yards is an awesome game for one game. He averaged that the entire season. That should just tell you how great a running back Adrian Peterson uh, um, was in his prime. And he was a consensus best running back for several years. No one would ever doubt about it. Those that like fantasy league, he was an, no doubt about it. Overall first pick in his prime. What do you think about Adrian Peterson? As a running back. The other thing that makes him super special is he's one of these team guys, another guy who you really rally around. We haven't really talked about it perhaps enough. Maybe it's something that we don't, you know, investigate as much as the statistics, but Adrian Peterson really can, you know, rally a team around him. And he produced those statistics when people knew that they had to protect against the run. So he, again, is just when, 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 when you have a player who can still produce when, when he's the focus of the defense's, uh, attention they deserve a lot of credit I think he deserves credit for his pad, pass catching and his blocking ability very few running backs can play three downs uh, consistently because of their inability to, to help with the pass protection and that was something else that Adrian Peterson proved out yeah um, as far as Aaron Rodgers goes um, I mean he, he has the advantage Michael of being everywhere you can you can't watch a football game, even ones in which he's not playing because he's going to be in all the different commercials. So he has a lot of the hype, but the hype is backed up with true, unbelievable talent uh, as a quarterback. And what's amazing is he's still doing it at an older age. Five times this year, five times this year, he has thrown for four touchdowns and zero interceptions. And even though you don't think of him as a running quarterback, because he's, he's, he's not, one thing I think he does better than, say, a Tom Brady and a Drew Brees is his elusiveness and his ability to run for that key first down. Uh, I really, really think Aaron Rodgers deserves all the hype. <laughs> he is truly a great quarterback. Not only is he an athlete, Right, a little bit more like Pat Mahomes on the in terms of the maneuverability and accuracy and ability to deliver from all angles perspective, uh, but he also has proven over year after year after year how to deal with pressure. He's also another quarterback with a great QBR under pressure and how to, you know, who who is better at drawing the defense off sides and then getting a playoff and maybe even you know throwing for a big pass or getting getting a team when they still have 12 men on the field. Nobody is better at that than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And his, uh, his accuracy uh, in his mobility and his strength. I mean, no quarterback career wise uh, has a better passing rating than Aaron Rodgers. Okay. We got to make our call, Michael. This is tough. Again, I'm going to say, this is going to be a real shame if the results are like 90% to 10% for Aaron Rodgers. That's just not fair. But I'm going to unfortunately be one of the people who are piling on uh, in going with Aaron Rodgers. But Adrian Peterson definitely, definitely deserves your consideration. I agree. Uh, you know, if if this if Aaron Rodgers was just a little bit younger and we did or older and we did this uh, several years back, I, it might come out a different way because it's just too tempting to consider the current body of work. But that being said, Aaron Rodgers deserves to make it through. All right, our very last matchup, Michael Thomas versus Russell Wilson. Two guys still in their prime as we speak today. Uh, Michael Thomas was absolutely absurd in last year in 2019. NFL record, Michael, 147 receptions. Not surprising, he led all receivers in 2019 in yards. Meanwhile, Russell Wilson, he is a Super Bowl champion. Uh, he actually holds the record actually for QB wins over the seventh season. So he's done it in the regular season as well as the playoffs. 
um, hasn't missed a game, not a single game in nine years, and he has been named to seven Pro Bowls. Michael, let's start with Michael Thomas. Well, I feel like this just seems like deja vu with some of these other conversations that we've been having before. A fantastic wide receiver who's currently in their prime, who demands attention, who has the ability to still produce despite that attention versus a, a quarterback that all he does is win. Uh, Michael Thomas, I mean, what, can, what else do you need to say? If we're talking about prime, last year was his prime and he broke the record. And, and that's, I mean, that is... That's kind of all you have to say. He doesn't drop the ball ever. He's great at blocking. He's just this physical specimen. So it just kind of feels very similar to what we've been saying about these, these other wide receivers. Kind of has everything. And just, you know, other than this year, he's also been a model citizen of avoiding the injury. Yeah, and, and even more impressive in 2019 for Michael Thomas is Drew Brees got hurt. So in the middle of the, the, the year, he had Teddy Bridgewater, the backup QB, throwing to him. And guess what? He still produced. And more than any other position, I know that running backs, you can try to stack the box. But to me, the position that's easiest to stop is wide receiver. And when you know that this is by far the, that team's biggest weapon and you can still produce game in, game out, it is always impressive to me, Michael. So... Yep. Let's go over to Russell Wilson. Michael, your thoughts. Russell Wilson, I know he's your guy, but he he deserves the credit that he gets from you and doesn't get really enough of it from others. He hasn't missed a game in nine years, right? That's just unheard of, right? That's like impossible. But here he is producing year in and year out. Uh, despite the fact that he's not my favorite player, uh, I understand why he's why he's here, uh, and I'm just going to get right to it. Despite the fact that Michael Thomas is is in the same category as DeAndre Hopkins uh, and Antonio Brown as a receiver, uh, I, I think Russell Wilson deserves the nod here. I continue to give it to uh, those that show the Iron Man capability, and that's one of the main reasons I give it to Russell Wilson. The bottom line is, again, I've watched this guy for over nine years. And an NFL owner said uh, a very important quote. He said, I know I can't win the Super Bowl every year, but just make me compete for a Super Bowl every year to keep my fan base happy and excited. And that's what Russell Wilson does. That's an amazing stat to me that over seven seasons, he has, it's not Tom Brady, it's not Drew Brees, the, the, the quarterback that wins the most in the last seven years is Russell Wilson. And he's been on the field in every one of those games in those seven seasons to be relied on in the, in the play. And he's doing that without a very good offensive line at all, without a marquee wide receiver at all during that entire period of time. And he, all he does is win. He's a winner. He's an Iron Man, um, and I am going to definitely be putting my full support behind him in this first round. Uh, I, I think the other reason Russell Wilson deserves a nod here is just his ability, kind of as you mentioned, because of the pressure that he faces, his ability to make things happen under pressure when, uh, when things don't go the way they should according to snap. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily always the best quality. What you would like is for the decision to be made sometimes kind of pre-snap or right away. It doesn't, shouldn't always require the ability to run around. But, you know, Russell Wilson's ability to do that and, you know, get the play done has resulted in the quarterback wins. And, and, and winning is, is kind of number one priority when it comes here. Uh, you know, other than the time he did follow the instruction and throw that pass uh, against the Patriots that probably should have uh, been a handoff instead, and maybe he should have uh, uh, audibled away. He's just made the right decision over and over again. Yeah, he'd be two-time QB, and we could have taken one of those rings away from Brady. But thank you for bringing that up. It's only taken uh, six or seven years of therapy uh, to get over that. All right. So, folks, now we turn it over to you. You've got to vote. Go to fantasyfootballconsultants.net. It takes, again, less than two minutes. And answer who you think is going to win in each matchups. And the next time you see us on this uh, channel, on this show, 
we will give you the results and then preview the next round. If you like our show and you like our channel, you can do a couple of real basic things, slam that like button and hit subscribe and followed by the bell icon. That will make sure you're notified when our next show on this topic occurs. And don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you guys. Not, not only uh, picking on us a little bit for what we said and how we said it, but just telling us uh, what you're thinking, what, what really should be swaying the vote here. Love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Campaign for your guy. Who should win in which, in which matchup and why? And also complain if your guy got snubbed and why he should have been in this tournament. Until we see you next time, take care, be safe. See you later. We'll see you guys.